It's Wednesday, surfing into week three with Matt Money Smith and the best of the beat. That's right, Rick Stroud, Kelsey Conway, and Tom Curran. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Then, that's not all, kids. I am talking golf. That's right, golf with one of the most versatile players in my memory. Uh, let's see here. He scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. He went to the same school as Don Beebe. I just learned that this morning. Hit me at Up and Adams show with your guesses. Uh, someone I love and I'm actually kind of nervous to interview because I've never met him but let's get right to it. Time for the show. Big week three kicks off tomorrow, of course. Let's get to some reporters from around the NFL. I love the time and appreciate it so much. Rick Stroud, as you are in Tampa covering the Buccaneers ahead of their week three tilt against the Packers. Uh, Tampa Bay Times is all over it. Good morning to you. Give me an update on that receiver room. Ugh. It's a mess, Kay. I mean, we're not going to know about Julio Jones. He doesn't practice on Wednesdays, obviously, but they've got a ton of injuries, and they're waiting to see as we talk now whether Mike Evans is going to be successful to appeal his suspension. He's looking at a one-game suspension for pushing Marshawn Lynch. It's the second time that happened since 2017. Chris Godwin obviously is out. We're not sure if he's going to make it back. So they've signed Cole Beasley, who we all know, uh, you know, was out there on the street waiting for an opportunity. Yeah. He's on their practice squad, probably going to be activated this week. It is a mess. Tom Brady's running out of targets. I mean, is he calling it Edelman? Is uh, Amendola on line two? <laughs> Dion right. Branch, what's Dion Branch up to? Maybe he'll see if he's available this week. Uh, you know, Tom Brady, it's, it's been a lot of adversity. He's been in the headlines a lot as well. I'm just going to ask the simple question. How is Tom Brady? Okay, it's, it, I don't really know. I mean, I'll tell you this. You know, when he got here, they won a Super Bowl. He was like that Disney dad, right? He was taking to the theme parks every weekend. Uh, he was playing with his friend Gronky. Everything was great. And then all of a sudden, you know, he retires, he unretires, he comes back, he, he's, you know, on some kind of a mysterious 11-day vacation. Nobody knows where he is. Now he's screaming at the receivers, he's throwing tablets, um, and, he's, and he's losing weight. People are worried about him. He's looking more like Kevin Bacon every day. So I don't, I don't know what's going on uh, with Tom personally, but he is, you know what he is? He's 2-0. He's 2-0 with wins at the Saints and against Dallas on the road. And that's what he does the best, right? Yeah, and those Saints wins never come easy for him, especially in that Bucks uniform. So, I mean, you're giving a, a bright light, and there's a lot of jokes flying around. I know you don't mean to joke with the Kevin Bacon thing, but, like, we don't know what's going on. It's a bit scary no. and worrisome, uh, as we've all watched him and enjoyed him throughout the years, uh, the supreme champion, like, the, the biggest star in our sport. So, uh, whatever it is, we'll be monitoring it closely, of course, and, and wishing him all the best in everything that's going on on the field and off. Uh, this sure. weekend, he's going to have his hands Full. He's got the Packers with that wide receiver issue. Do you see the Bucks defense matching up well against Aaron Rodgers and this new run-heavy sort of snooze-fest offense as far as what we're expecting uh, as usual from Aaron Rodgers? I do, Kay. I, I think the Bucks defense uh, has a chance to be elite. Um, they've not given up but just one touchdown in the first two weeks, and they've matched up well against Aaron Rodgers, uh, particularly now that Rodgers doesn't have his full complement of his normal receivers. He's got young guys um, the Bucks have 10 sacks in two weeks. Uh, if you look at their secondary, they're an experienced group. They're really communicating back there. Uh, three interceptions last week against Jameis Winston. Uh, you know, they have really done a nice job under Todd Bowles of, of forcing turnovers and forcing the issue. So uh, if they can stop the run, they've given up some runs to start the game in each of the last two weeks. they got to put a clamp on that. But I, I think they match up well against this team. It's a home opener, so... Uh, they should give Aaron Rodgers a fit. Mm, and we, of course, on the other side, the Bears runners got going a little bit in that game. They didn't win. They didn't have much offense. But there's some holes. There are some questions I have about the run defense on the Packers side. So maybe Leonard Fournette and company can get it going uh, with the lack of receiving options for that Tom Brady. Rick Stroud, we appreciate you, Tampa Bay Times. You hung out with Tom Curran. He'll be joining us in just a second. But let's get and turn our attention to the Bengals. Chris Collinsworth had this to say on our show yesterday. I think that Joe Burrow has to take a little bit of it and just go, I'm not going to make my guys look bad anymore. Okay. You know, I'm going to get this ball out of here. Tom Brady, you know, is under 25 sacks every year for a reason because Tom Brady knows how to huh? get rid of the football. Collinsworth preaching accountability. Kelsey Conway from the Cincinnati Inquirer enters the chat. Welcome, Kelsey. So excited to see you this morning. Uh, I'm not excited about the 0-2 start. Am I in full panic mode with my Bengals? 
Well, it was funny listening to you tell Rick that the Packers offense was a snooze fest. So I have no idea what you're, what you're about to call the Bengals offense in these last two games. But I would say, do not push the panic button yet. We're at like a yellow light. Um, if they lose to the Jets, though, this weekend, then Oof. I would say panic is appropriate. Yeah, that panic is appropriate is right. And we, you know, talked about the sacks with Chris Collins where everyone's talking about it. He's taken 13 so far this season. Have you seen anything? You're there every day. You're in the building. You're at training camp, the appendix, all of that, the new offensive line. Is there anything about Joe Burrow this season that is different from that 2021 stud we saw out there? I think you nailed it when you said the appendectomy that he had. I think it was underplayed a little bit because it's such a common surgery that regular people have but for a professional athlete that plays at the level that he had he he was really hurting when he first made his way out to practice like you could see him he couldn't even stand up the first couple of days but when you ask if I see anything different in Joe Burrow it's really all about the fact that he did not get to practice with full pads with this offensive line and they're four of their five new starters until the Rams practices, which was the final week of the preseason. And you know, they're, right. they're not hitting as they are in a regular season game. So I really think that the fact that they did not get meaningful game snaps and enough practice reps together as a unit is a big issue for them. And I think he's trying to sort it out with them up front. And I do think it's going to take a little bit of time, but they know that they don't really have a lot of time to afford this. So I think they're right. kind of trying against to the Jets. Try figure it out. You said it, and you could stop there. They got to get right against the Jets. I'll ask you this, though. We're talking Joe Burrow, and there's so much about his accountability. Uh, what about Zach Taylor? Where is he in all this? Well, I asked Zach Taylor, where are you at with the fact that when I asked him in the spring last year, your goal for the offense was to be one of the most explosive offense in the league, and they did that as you know. And so I said, so what's this year's goal? And he said to be even more explosive, which is the opposite of what they've been. So when I brought that back up, he kindly said, uh, it's a long season. We have things that we need to get corrected, but he didn't seem overly worked up, but it is notable that they have not been able to hit on the deep shots that you saw them hit chase uh, last year. I, I, I don't know that defenses have figured him out, but there's something they certainly have to adjust to, and we'll see what the Jets do. Excellent work from Kelsey Conway. We appreciate you giving us all the goods as the Bengals beat reporter for the Cincinnati Inquirer. Talk to you soon as we welcome in the goof troop. Here he is. Yes, dear friend of mine. Oh, here here we are. This, <laughs> this Tom Curran, this clip has gotten so much play. My hair is so, what is this color of my hair, Tom? That was a, a mauve. I think that was a mauve, and I really liked it. It is so it, ugly. Then you have this. No, it's not. You have this deep part. I used to run to. I used to go up to New England to take the train. I would go to Mac Makeup at the counter of the Macy's and plop down sixty dollars for them to do my hair like I was going to a club in Boston late night, and then I'd go to the studio. It was outrageous, but I love you, and you are here. You talked to Rick Stroud yesterday on your podcast, which I listen to. It's appointment listening for me. You and I do quick slants together every day at Tuesday. Give us a little plug. Oh, yeah. Quick slants has been tremendous. That was a skit, of course, from I think 2015. We were reenacting training camp fights and and how they can just spill over so quick. So that's what happened on that. But quick slants has been great. You're great. We really appreciate having you. And it's funny to listen to Rick K because that affinity for Tom Brady still remains for so many. I think a lot of people have Brady fatigue up here and they're like whatever he's changed he's different but i think you look at those pictures and you, and you see how drawn he is and he's a member of the family he brought people an awful lot of good times there's a lot of dogs a lot of boys probably a lot of girls named brady up here because of him so it's tough to watch you know yeah but what what's going on like when you see these pictures and these images and you see some you know some of the things we've seen before him throwing the surface him being frustrated especially in a in a sticky prickly matchup that has you know a lot of uh, drama to it like that one we've seen those things but just there it's something looks off and it's not something to joke about and i want to remind people as i talk to rick like it's not like a funny thing at all 45 is 
a weird age. It was nine years ago for me. But you do get to a point, and we've never seen a guy get to a point in his life where he's that age. And midlife crises yeah. are a real thing. What does he want? What does he want to be? How does he want to spend his next 30 or 40 years on the planet? And I think there's a real confluence of, well, maybe I want to have a production company. Maybe I want to be in acting. Maybe I want to be He's doing uh, it all. an analyst for Fox. It's everything, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm mid thirties, and I just want to go on a hike every morning, and I just, <laughs> I just want to live in you know the mountains, and, I, and he's adding so much on his plate while he's still wanting to play, and then it's playing out. But I mean, the the this is you know it's it's all very worrisome, and it's I like to hear you say he's like a family member, because I'm sure that fatigue does exist in in covering him for everybody working the beat up there, but also for fans, and it's just uh, I guess we're just gonna have to watch and and pray as it goes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you get to know him, you get to know his family, you get to know um, who he is and what he's about. And I've always said this to people, like, what's Brady like? I'm like, and I've always said this, Kay, he is better one-on-one -on -one in front of his locker than he is at the podium, and he's excellent at the podium. Because he engages with you. You've experienced it, I'm sure, in one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's just you and him, yeah. and he engages. It's not as if, so you, he is genuinely a good person. Yeah. And I think that's why, as with anybody, you hope for the best for him. And I think he's going through probably, obviously, not the greatest period in his life, but I'm sure he'll sort it up. And he's been through a lot, and he's lived it all through camera, and then there's the, the, the iceberg under the water that we don't even know about. We wish him the best. He's got a big one against the Packers this week. And I think, you know, and people ask me in interviews all the time, like, what's going to happen with him? I don't know, and I just want it to be whatever he wants it to be. Like, what does he want? Do you want to have the Cinderella? Right. Do you want to win another championship? Was last year not enough because your face was bleeding and you almost led the comeback against the Rams and it didn't quite happen for you? Like, will one more Super Bowl ring be enough for you to walk away? I'm not quite sure. I don't want the game taken away from him, but sometimes that's the way it has to end for somebody to walk away and somebody as competitive and as, I think I can say this, obsessed with the game as he is. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Patriots. You cover this sure. team, of course, for NBC Sports. You've done it for so long. Uh, and I want to know if you're impressed by the Patriots win. Hey, they got a win, buddy. 100%. Because on the, on the curve, it's significant. They were inept offensively throughout the summer. And you could say, well, they still only scored one touchdown right. on a drive. The other one they picked up after a fumble on a punt. Yeah, you're right. But the way they closed the game, Kay, a six-minute drive that included kneel downs at the end because they were able to cobble together a running game that was non-existent in the summer. That's a massive stride for this team. I'm not saying that they're a wagon, but at least some of the stuff that Bill Belichick asked for in terms of patience has been rewarded. So it's yeah. interesting to watch Mac Jones too this year, Kay, in, in, in just... Tell me about like, him, because he's taken some shots. I, I saw the 50-50 ball situation. Like, he's being encouraged to do that. What do you got? There's a lot of conversation right now this week about Mac's quote-unquote regression. Okay. And there's a lot of different things that he's being asked to do, and that's throw down the field more often, take more shots. The offense is different. Obviously, Josh McDaniels is gone. You see this great reward here with a catch by Nelson Aguilar, and he goes in, but he's also had two picks, Mac Jones has, on throws downfield to Devontae Parker. So while the regression might show up in stats and it might show up to the naked eye, it's not like he got dumber. It's not like he got worse. It's not like he got weaker and his right. arm's not as good. It's just a natural transition away from Josh McDaniels to a new offense and new coaches. And I don't even, I still don't know who's doing the plays. I mean, Matt Patricia's all over it. Everybody's all over it. Quickly, is this defense ready to handle Lamar Jackson? Because he was incredible they in a loss. Incredible. To, he is insane. And do you know, well, we threw the stat up uh, yesterday on Quick Slants. He is already in 60 games, the sixth most prolific runner at Ooh. quarterback in NFL history. All right, Devin McCourty. <laughs> so Devin's in trouble. Yeah. Devin will have to be chasing his posterior all over the place. But I do think they tried to get faster on defense in the offseason. So at least they're a little more equipped to chase Lamar. Uh, I have a, one question. Well, I, I, so I have this guest coming on. You know, I don't get nervous about it. I'm, so Danny Woodhead, I think, is coming on the show after the break. That you know, I love, like, I loved it. Like, I'm scared I'm going to fangirl a little bit because he's just like, he's just one of my favorite players. He played for the Patriots, the Chargers, my favorite teams. And that was my first quick slant skit was I had uh, Kevin Miller's little kid come in and pretend he was Danny Woodhead. <laughs> we put a helmet on him and shoulder pads and he ran around. 
She's hysterical. But he almost made the TV. U.S. Open, and he's always tweeting, and I'm just like so, I'm so excited to have him on. Do you, is there anything that I should ask Danny Woodhead? He might even be listening now. Though I kind of think he's Danny, <laughs> uh, let's see, ask him about seven-man football and ask him how thick his thighs are. I'm sorry, wait, say like that one more time? Campbell thigh. I couldn't hear huh? that one. Ah! Oh, there he is. <laughs> I hear some. <laughs> wait, ask, ask him the question. Uh, seven-man football, that's what you played up there in, she in uh, Nebraska, right? Tom, I mean, that's uh, it's a good thought. No. But there is eight-man football up here. Eight-man Without a, without a doubt, there is. I never played that. See, like everyone thinks that like I grew up in a town of like twenty five, you know, and and I think probably people in New England still think that because Tom is telling people that. Yeah. But uh, it's the media these days. No, that no that. Imagine that, right? Bill said, "Don't tell him anything." So I'm, I've always had to go off of Bill. But no, there is eight man, and it's interesting. I've never played it. I think it looks like a disaster because it's just like a, a track meet. It looks terrible. Oh, you would have dominated. I'll go out. <laughs> let Danny come in. Ask this him about how thick his thighs ever. are. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> Ask him about his massive thighs on his tiny body. I'm not going to. I'm literally never going to do that. Like literally, I will ask you I'll, this. While I'll we answer have, it if you need me to. Da Danny, Danny, while while we have Tom here, you know Cole Beasley signs with New England. Yeah. Or so, sorry, signs with the Bucks. The same thing. You you hung it up in twenty. I just want to know in twenty seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Did Tom Brady light up your phone and try to get you to come somewhere? He did not. What he is did not. That? I don't know. I mean, you know, he probably forgot about me. He might not have remembered that uh, we played together. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Tom, I think it's well, it's tough to it's tough to hear. I well know. hold on. He did he did lose his phone when he smashed it that one time. So maybe he got a new number. <laughs> and I it have didn't a, happen. I, ah, I, I'm I not have Tom his Curran. old number. Tom Curran, I love you. Danny Woodhead, do not move. Lots of fun with you. I want to talk golf. I want to talk Don Beebe. I want to talk Nebraska. I want to talk the small school you went to that I can't pronounce all after this on Up and Adams. From undrafted to unsung hero, doesn't get an invite to the combine, doesn't care, makes a name for himself anyway. For the Jets, the Patriots, and the Chargers, and Ravens, by the way, is a dynamic weapon. Uh, he caught the first touchdown in Super Bowl 46 from none other than Tom Brady. Didn't get the win there, but here to talk about everything from not from a small city in Nebraska that doesn't that has more than 25 people. Danny Woodhead, right? Fair. I mean, it, it was more like 20,000 people, yeah. you know, Tom, Tom, I mean, it was nice of him to act like he knew who I was, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I played no eight man football. It wasn't a little, little town. It wasn't a city, but I mean, 20,000 people in the middle of Nebraska still Still a little bit bigger. Yeah. Well, he also brought up your thighs, which I, this is an awkward conversation, but we apparently we pulled the I'm picture. I'm here for it. I'm here so, for it. So, I mean, this is, you know, 50 Shades of Saquon Barkley going on over here with these thugs. What's going on? Well, that's where we got the hat, too. Okay. Right? Um, oh! I don't know. I, yes. Yes, without a doubt. Golf sub, uh, Golfsub70.com. Okay. And you can check it out. We, we are selling the hats. So for uh, any of the fans, any of the fans that I have still. So, no, okay, I'm not gonna, I understand the undrafted, undersized mentality, but that's gonna end right here because everyone I told you were coming on the show, and I mean everyone, oh my God, no way, I love him. What is it like and what is the key to being universally beloved by NFL fans because it is especially hard to do as a former Patriot? Yeah, it's been really interesting. I mean, even when I was with the Jets for the first couple of years, I mean, people embrace me, and I think it's, for some reason, people believe that they are me, right? Like, I'm 5'8", mm. I'm a small guy, I'm just a hard worker with absolutely zero talent, you know? That's that's what everyone's thought was. And I, I think I was just very relatable, and I, I tried to be relatable even as I, um, I don't want to say rose up to be like a main offensive player, but kind of ended up happening. Yeah. Um, I think people related to me um, because I'm a regular dude. I don't take myself 
very serious. And I just enjoyed the game of football and I enjoy being around people. Yeah, I think for, you know, I I loved watching you and it was just, you know, I loved Philip Rivers and I liked the connection you two had very much. And it was more about you being really tough and you having toughness and you playing really tough and then being used all over the field that that uh, that I liked so much. But everyone is just so excited to have you on. So we really, really appreciate it as we uh, sort of flip the page and talk a little football here. We'll get to the golf here in a second. There's golf yeah. clubs by me, which are making me uncomfortable because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> but I do know about your former squad. So here in 2022, the Chargers showdown with the Chiefs last Thursday night. Justin Herbert, speaking of toughness, such a gutsy performance, right? He stayed in the game, his rib injury, all of that. You're known for tough. Uh, you know, you were always out there doing your thing. Quarterbacks these days don't really get touched, right? They don't have that same mentality. Mm-hmm. So when you see that from a quarterback, what's the effect in the locker room? Well, I mean, the thing is with what he was dealing with, I mean, it affected everything that he did. He, it affected his throwing motion. It affected his movement. If, if you saw him scrambling, he, he could have thrown it away, but it obviously was put him in a lot of pain. And then he throws a strike on fourth down. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I was fortunate to play with the quarterback before him, and he's one of the toughest players I've ever been around. So they've kind of been fortunate to have guys that could play. And even before that, it was Drew Brees. So they had guys that were tough, that loved the game of football. And obviously, you can tell they study the game of football, Mm -hmm. and and that kind of puts them ahead. Um, Justin Herbert, I thought it was a terrible move when they got rid of Phillip, but they look really good now yeah. because Justin Herbert's a star and he's going to be a star in this league for a long time. Um, Just because of not only does he have the talent, but he has the, he has the mindset. He has the mental, uh, the, the mental awareness, the, he, he studies the game that makes a difference in a quarterback that if you don't have, especially if you don't have the elite of the elite coaches. Now, I think I really believe they got that now, but some not everyone in the NFL is a great coach and if you have a quarterback that can cover up things that helps right do do you talk to Philip do you guys communicate uh not I we haven't talked about Herbert yeah, I mean but I mean like but, do you guys yeah, talk you know, he's kind just, of missing. just still through like tech so yeah. so Philip was one of my I mean he was one of my closest friends um that I ever played with him and like Eric Weddle and there are a few others but those were the guys that I did everything with. I mean, we worked out early. We would cold tub, hot tub, sauna. Like it was just, that's just what we did. And he ended up becoming a very close friend. So I'm fortunate that um, he's still a friend um, because with the NFL, you retire and everyone goes back to the places they live or to their hometowns. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, we were also conditioned that people are getting fired every other day. So it's hard to get close. He's one of the ones that I, I'm fortunate that I, you know, I still have a relationship with. I love it. We have Eric Weddle on to the show tomorrow. So I'll uh, definitely tell him that he's you the say best. hi. He is the greatest. Yeah. And he's like taking his kids to school in a minivan and doing like vacuuming. He talks to us all about that. It's like yeah. absolutely incredible to think about. Uh, but one more on the Chargers. The, you know, these demons I thought were finally exercised, right? They continue to yeah. show themselves. They lose a the double digit lead uh you know on Thursday night was we saw what goes through your head watching that is it a here we go again uh just as somebody who sort of lived through some of that as a charger unfortunately a little bit I mean I I dealt with that but I mean it's a whole new group Mm -hmm. it's 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 a whole new group um and they they have won games obviously last year ended a little rough but they have the talent. They, they still have, um, they have loads of talent. Their defense is amazing. I thought they dominated the chiefs. Um, the chiefs are a little different. They're still great. Mahomes is still great, but it's, I mean, you look at the Tyreek Hill effect in Miami right now, like there, there's something that he does now. It, it just, it just gives you like the, the second, third, fourth options. You don't have to beat anyone. Like the thing that was great when I was playing with Gates like we'd be on the same side and they had to decide who to cover. So it's the same. It's I'm not Tyree kill, but Gates was more like the Tyree kill. But like when you have someone that's great and is a problem, right. it just makes it easier for everyone else. So it's, it's so true. the chiefs, the chiefs are great and they're going to continue to be great, but the chargers are good. They're really good. And if they can pull things together, stay healthy, get Keenan Allen back, stuff like that. I, I think they have a, a real opportunity to be, 
to maybe even compete for the AFC West right We now. love it. The Chiefs are great. The Chargers are good. What are the Patriots? You know Bill Belichick. I cannot – Yeah. I, I would guess that you have blind faith in him. Does he deserve that, or are the Patriots cooked? No, I don't think they're cooked. I mean, it, it's it, – I know everyone in Boston's probably freaking out. But, I mean, without a doubt, this is year two without – or not year two, year three without Tom. Um they did some good things last year. The, the thing you have to take in consideration is Josh McDaniels is unreal. One of the best offensive minds mm -hmm. I've ever been around. And not that Matty P or Joe Judge or Bill or who, whoever's calling the plays. It really doesn't matter. It's different. And you can tell the offense is a little bit different too. Uh, Tom had like, he had however many years of, I mean, it was the same scheme, but he was with, O coordinators, the same O coordinators for a long time. The offense was very similar. Now, mm -hmm. maybe certain years we'd run a little bit more or we'd pass a little bit more, but it was the same scheme, the same comfortability. When we had Billy O, Bill O'Brien, I mean, it was still like Josh. I mean, there were some differences, but a lot of things were the same. I believe, I mean, this could be a terrible take right now, but Come November, that's that's what Bill cares about. How are we yeah. playing after Thanksgiving? If they can kind of even keep it around 500 and then around Thanksgiving, they're playing their best football, that's really what matters. He, always, he has said that year in, year out. That's always Bill's take on it. Uh, it's a little different now, and people are starting to doubt what's going on up there and some regression for Mac Jones and company, but they are 500, just what you're saying. So if they can keep that up, they got a tough one against the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, though. This week, we'll see how it uh, it all shakes out here. Um, you know, we, we're talking Patriots. You're, you're talking about Tom. Does Tom look right to you? That's a, that's a tough question, kind of. Um, he does it look different yes is he frustrated i don't know there's injuries with his receivers there's a lot going on then you have everything going on with retirement coming back you have everything going on with any sort of rumors i mean that if, if you think about it being in the limelight like that would just be tough anyways mm -hmm. um then you add personal stuff you add um should you have retired or not are you still in it if i'm him i'm just annoyed you know, like, I just be like, oh, this is annoying. I have to deal with it. And maybe that's, maybe it's getting to him. I don't know. But I will say this now I'm retired and I love it. It's amazing. And, and I'm not saying he's second guessing it, but a lot of people do have a tough time retiring and they don't know what's next. And, you know, he's, he's playing now. And I think, I think he has an opportunity to still win a Super Bowl just with the, the talent that they have. But it's always interesting the next step for players, guys that have played forever, and hopefully once it's time to step away. Would it surprise you, know, you just ready. knowing him and how he operated that he's struggling, like he's struggling to take that next step? It was easy for you. You moved on and you have golf and you've got mm -hmm. family and you've got friends. Like, is it, was it surprising to you that, that it might just be that, that he's, he's having a tough time walking away, like so many NFL players do? Yeah. No, I, I, think, it's a, I, think, I think my situation is not normal to be yeah completely honest. Um, I, I love football. I loved it, but I had four kids. I had my oldest was in kindergarten. Then she'd have to change schools again. And then we'd go back to Nebraska for part of it. And I was like, you know yeah. what, this, this is it. I mean, could I have played a couple more, more years? Sure. But like, I, I was ready. My family, like my wife could have cared less. She was like, do what you want to do. Um, so like I had all the support in the world, but I was like, you know what? I've, I've gotten older. I've been injured. Yeah. Let's, let's move on. And let's, you did. let's move on. You moved on to this up top. We got to talk about yes. this. A lot of players go into who knows broadcasting or different directions. You went into yeah. serious golf, like almost qualified for the U S open golf. So let's manifest this thing. Say you do make it into the, a major I don't yeah. know what to say. Tournament. No, that's good. That's Tournament? good. Tournament? A major? Just call it a major. Sure, great. Yeah, major. That's good. Uh, that's great. Okay, so you have to pick <laughs> someone. Let's just play, play this game. You have to pick someone from your NFL career to be your caddy for that major. Mm, Who yeah. would it be and why? It would be Eric Weddle. 100% <laughs> be Eric Weddle. Because, so he gets me. He's a brother. Like, he's, he's literally family to me. And... And then he also knows my golf game. We've played a lot of golf together. We've played some competition golf now, just against other teammates, and we were on the same team. Okay. Um, but it, but he knows my golf game, and we just have fun. 
That's so so cool. it would just give me, um, I don't know, it'd be very relaxing for me and we'd be very serious. We'd be doing everything we could to like stomp on people's throats, but we'd also laugh. And yeah, that's what you do. Okay. Um, but like, I'm saying like, we, we would do everything we could to win and, and make other people look bad, but we'd also like be able to joke and hang yeah, out. Yeah, I love it. We're gonna have to play this for Eric Weddle tomorrow when he's on the show. Okay, but so in honor of your love of golf and my yeah. lack of knowledge to the pro to, uh, producer's delight of, uh, of the sport, we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna show you a couple of clubs. Please tell me this is the right one. Yes, this yeah. is a driver. Oh, everyone's That's seeing correct. me in my, in my wetsuit. It's Wetsuit Wednesday here on the show. We'll get to that in that money Smith. Uh, this is a big hitter, I understand, right? So I'd like to know, what current running back reminds you of this bad boy? A driver, a guy who can go the distance when you need like a, an 80 yard run. So, I mean, I would also go with, with power and you have to, and speed. So okay. that would be that would be accurate, right? I would say, I would, and you use it pretty much every hole. I would make that, um, probably I'd go with like a Derrick Henry because he's powerful Yeah. and, and he's fast. Yeah. Has he had long runs? Without a doubt. I mean, he had so, a 99-yard touchdown run a couple years ago against Jacksonville, I remember, on a Thursday yep. night. Uh, this is like the, get this, the Callaway Big Bertha. That's mm. that's what Derrick Henry is, right? Yeah, I would, I mean, why not? <laughs> All right, oh, let's go. Well, how do you guys think I know great. what a pitching wedge is? Which one is that? This that's one? the one that... I was going to say that's this not the This is the one putter, I would but... use in the Big Lebowski to beat up the car. Like the kid, you know, like when he comes out and he, Walter sub checks that car. Like you guys you know what I'm talking about. This is a versatile club. Like yeah, you. Every, every, everyone knows. Everyone, everyone knows. knows yeah, it can about. be used in many a way. Give me your mm -hmm. all around back who can do it all over the field, a la a pitching wedge. <laughs> I would say Alvin Kamara. And because yeah. he can, he can do pretty much anything. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. Um, Pitching wedge is a club that you don't use it every hole, but you're using it a lot. And you want it to be versatile. You can use it around the green or you can use it in the fairway to hit it close. You can spin, you can do whatever. You gotta be very versatile. And I would say Alvin Kamara. It's very heavy, I th much heavier than I thought it would be. But yeah, speaking of Kamara, he did miss last week's game. Mark Ingram stopped by the show yesterday. Yep. And he said, to your point, Alvin is the offense. And that's a running back saying that about another mm -hmm. uh, running back, that he's everything that they do. And he had 40, 480 catch seasons. We shouldn't sleep on that, right? Saints have the Panthers this week. And I hope that this fuels Christian McCaffrey on the other side and say, hey, I'm the driving wedge, pitching wedge. I'm the pitching wedge, not Alvin. We'll see what happens. All right, this last bad boy is one that I'm familiar with as I'm a you know, frequent first date, go to the, the old putt putt gal. Uh, this is the putter. This is the money club. You need to convert on fourth and inches. You go to this. You need to punch the ball in the end zone from the one yard line. Which running back are you giving this club to? And you're using it the most. So oh. he's always in the game. I'd go with Jonathan Taylor. Um, he, he can do everything. Um, and you need the putter in order to shoot a very good score. You need the putter in order to win. And he does everything. Um, I mean, you could you could still go with a Kamara or a Henry on this, but I think Jonathan Taylor uh, represents this because you always want him in the game no matter what. This Price is Right wedge could be yours. This is a, yeah, this is a putter. And uh, Jonathan Taylor, I'm going to Indy. I might see him. He got a big game against the Chiefs, but he led the league with 18 rushing touchdowns last year. Slow starts for these running backs, these studs this year, but I think Danny Woodhead just gave them all the motivation they need to get it done. Danny Woodhead, thank you for joining us, and you have to come back. Let's do it. You, you guys have to reach out to me. <laughs> Dude, you're the easiest to get. You're like the best. You're, like, you're just, you're the best. Danny went on the show. Perfect. And we'll be back after this as we have to get in my surf gear. That's right. Wetsuit went. <laughs> we come back. At least we have cool shoes on. Or at least everybody says they're cool. Are they cool? Oh, Jesus, Louisa. Not to overreact, but I loved having Danny Woodhead on the show. If we get Darren Sproles on, I can go to football heaven and die and be fine. All right, this is what you're looking at, my underreactions. We are underreacting to Nelson Aguilar. Tom Curran was awesome on the show, but he's making plays, Aguilar, and I love a rewrite. 
I am always here for a second act, and that's what you can get. Remember Aguilar down in Philly, that whole storyline with the unlike Aguilar when there was the fire and the man was helping children escape the fire. That's the storyline on him. And now they're encouraging 50-50 balls up in New England. I'm clutching my pearls because I'm weirded out by that, but I'm also very here for it. He had a game-winning play. I see you. Good luck. And that Raven secondary? banged up. So Aguilar, I would expect to have a good game, and he will be in my daily fantasy lineups over at FanDuel. All right, uh, the next thing that I think everyone is under reacting to is George Kittle. Listen, everybody's talking about Trey Lance and Jimmy G, and I totally get it, but we're totally underreacting to when we get Kittle back, which might be in the next couple of weeks here. It's not just the catching passes that he does, right? It's not just the run blocking or the pass protection. He does it all. But he's just a different animal. And this offense, this team looks different when he's out there. It's his presence that matters. And when you think, you know, about his importance and his bond with Jimmy G, that needs to be thought about as well. You know, this is a Super Bowl contending squad. We can talk about the quarterbacks all we want, but I'm just excited to welcome Kittle back to the party. This is a guy who's BFFs. I think we got the t-shirts, right? Yeah, look through the, I mean, come on. Jimmy G's not just autogra autographing fans after his, uh, you know, average win yesterday, last week. He's autographing this guy. They're wearing shirts of each other. Let's not forget the clicking that happens with Jimmy Garoppolo and George Kittle. I'm looking forward to that. And 49ers with George Kittle, as you saw on that, 28 and 14 without George Kittle since 2019, six and nine. Gronk would love that stat, but we do not like it if we're Niners fans. We want Kittle out there and we'll get that. Uh, the last thing that we're underreacting to is, you know, when you think high scoring offenses, you think Packers, you think Chiefs, you think Bills, you think Rams. We're underreacting to the Lions in such a big way. Take a look at the top scoring offenses in the NFL. Can we get a little studio? Can we get a little, a little noise for the Lions? Thank you. Oh, a whistle. Listen, it's not just their run game dominance, which they have. It's not just Goff, who looks awesome. I'm on Raw. The roster is great. Aiden's holding it down on defense as well. They get the hard knocks bump for me. They're beloved in that way. Nobody hates Dan Campbell. Big one against the Vikings. Jeff Okuda. I'm looking at you. Darius Slate took care of business against Justin Jefferson. Can you? Can this Lions defense sort of hold him in a divisional matchup? But uh, we'll see what the future is. They're not going to be an easy out for anybody, this Lions squad. DeAndre Swift, very exciting to watch and look for. A team that is very easy to root for in the NFL this season. There's my underreactions for your week two to week three pleasure. We've got more guests popping on the show, and we'll be back after this panic room for Fantasy Perspective. What did you think have, Tom Brady? How many touchdowns does Tom Brady have? Does he have two touchdowns? Two total touchdowns? Stop it. Now he's got no receivers. Danny Woodhead to the Bucks. Make it happen. We'll be back right here on Up and Adams. Don't go anywhere. It's Wetsuit Wednesday. He's the voice of Los Angeles Chargers and host of Petros and Money on AM570 here in LA. Matt Money Smith surfs up, bro. Yeah, I want you. Give it a little you. Yee with the shotgun. Oh, I'm sorry. Yee. Why is it on my face Yee. on that thing? Yeah, What's happening? There we go. This is terrifying. Uh, okay, two weeks in the books. You've updated your power rankings, some upsets this past weekend. Go. Can we go worst to best this time? Sure. All Absolutely. Right. I think I know who's at the top, but go for it. Well, here we go. At the bottom, uh, in the 32 to 24, fourth quadrant, uh, two notables. I think the Colts, they could very well make fools of me. I dropped them 11 spots. I'm really worried about that offensive line being leaky. Matt Ryan getting beat up. Uh, also, the Raiders, um, as they slide a little bit. Actually, they're going to be in the next quadrant up. I messed that one up. Quadrant. But the Colts are the most concerning because, you see, they could very well bump up. There's the Raiders at the back end of 17 through 24. Um, the Lions, I'm They're looking down at. They're eight, the Raiders? Yeah. Okay. Their pass rush fell off. If they have no pass rush, they have serious issues. Lions but, are uh, feisty. The Lions, and they got an opportunity this week. That Look, 35 and a half points per week on offense. You mentioned I'm on Ross St. Brown of Southern California, legend in high school with Bryce Young and yeah. JT Daniels at Modern Day. Think Okuda's so. going to do something? I think, I think so. Again, think so. Really? Absolutely. You don't look, think he's had a Justin rush, Jefferson 200 yard game? They figured it out in, uh, in Philadelphia, Ooh. right? I know. I know. Are we going to continue? We're Let's do it. You. Let's do it. Let's get into the meat show, of this. Man, the money. playoff teams, if you will. Look at the Cowboys. They were down 12 last week. They're up eight this week. Why? Micah Parsons very well may be the most dominant force on either side of the ball yeah, in the NFL right Joey now. Yeah, Burrow. Exactly. So I think what you're seeing now, Dan Quinn is so underrated. He gets lumped in with that Pete Carroll, Gus Bradley, cover three. No, Dan Quinn is messing with teams. I mean, big time, especially because he has that weapon. One of the most indomitable forces we've seen since Lawrence Taylor. I don't think that's an egregious comparison. Yes, it's hyperbolic, wow. but 
he can't be stopped. I mean, he basically injured Donovan Smith. Uh, he beat up on Jonah Williams at number one. He beat up on the big free agent acquisition, Lyle Collins. He can't be contained, and that's what's going to set the up tone. Up nine spots, Cooper Rush. And they get three of their next four in division. Giants, Commanders, then I believe it's Rams, and then Eagles. So we're really going to see what the Cooper Cowboys Rush are going to do. Cooper Rush would be a good surfer name. I think so too. Because you, you call me like, yo, what's up, Coop? Yeah. What's uh, up, Coop? You, straight, you, Coop. Yeah. All right, what's next? <laughs> All right, let's go to one through eight. And uh, when it comes to this category, look, this is where it's super tight. Uh, the Bucks take a big tumble. Um, I'm just concerned about their offense. But you see what's highlighted there uh, the 49ers jumping up six spots, even with the injury to Trey Lance. And I think, like, the key with the 49ers to me is. We know what they are with Jimmy Garoppolo. We know how Kyle Shanahan, he is the best offensive play caller in the league. And you look at that game, uh, you know, that game against Seattle, and what do you have? You've got Tell five me. yards per, per, per carry, 189 total rushing yards, okay. two touchdowns on the ground. Okay. Just, keep us, just keep us out of trouble, Jimmy. And that's what it's going to be with that dominant defensive front. I hope so. And then hopefully Kittle, like I was saying, comes back. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they've the been mix. doing this without him. And he is one of the great, unique weapons in the NFL because he does it all as a tight end. Nine, I know. I think not, yeah, I don't think Aaron Rodgers was happy to see Jimmy G get back into the spotlight. Probably for this not. Team. Probably not. All right, what, uh, what else we got? Well, we got Chiefs and Chargers. I know people were looking at that like, wait a minute. The Chargers just lost on Thursday night, and you have them ahead of the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? So our friend Danny Woodhead made the point for me. Tell me. The Chargers dominated that game. I mean, they absolutely dominated that game. Orlando Brown is an issue for the Chiefs. That offensive line is an issue. If they actually got holding penalties called against them, they'd be in a world of hurt. But Patrick Mahomes was under duress the entire game. He had four interception-worthy plays. Unfortunately, the Chargers and the officials weren't able to cash those in. One got a flag that should not have been thrown. And I would have had that pick, and I thought Asante had his hand under that other one that would have been a pick. Mm -hmm. Both of those drives led to touchdowns. So I'm concerned about the Chiefs up front. I'm excited about the Chargers defense. <laughs> What's my lesson for today? <laughs> You're doing well. I just you like to pretend. That's the key is you want to get your you got your head up. So long borders put their head down and their feet down. Don't, Short don't, borders. Don't use words I don't understand. What's a long border? So you're on border? you're on a little you're this on a six o fish right now. I brought in my kids' boards today because we were kind of oh, rolling thanks. around on them so they're no longer fiberglass. Uh, what they're top, just foamies. Top, give, give me a little something while you tell me about uh, it. All right, here we go. We're not going to do that. Well, let's right, hang out quick. here. So what, what, yeah, a lot of people a lot of people keep their hands on the rails when they pop up. You don't want to do that. The sharks can you come nibble your, on them. Yeah, it'll be you great. You want your hands here. Okay. And then the idea when you pop is, and I'm not going to do the full burpee, but you want your front foot when you pop up to be right between your hands. That oh, way. Oh, it's like a yoga move. Yeah, exactly. It's like warrior so exactly. two. Like warrior I'm not two. doing that. I'm going to embarrass do myself. It. Come on. Do hey, it. tell me about a match if you're motion. excited about this weekend while we do this. I know you like Jags Chargers. I do, yes. So I love that. Oh, you know what? You were just about to do a duck dive. So you put your one foot up oh, and you push like down. A, oh, yeah. That's, that's what I was trying to do. Hold on. I'm doing a duck dive. Everyone, a duck dive. There you go. You got it. That's how you push under the wave and you can paddle out. This is a terrible idea. Okay, tell me about the Jags and Chargers. Oh, that Jags front. It's super. I'm going to move this way. I'm feeling really awkward. The Jags front against the Chargers offensive line, Corey Lindsley banged up, Trey Pipkins banged up. We saw Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen really wreck the Colts. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. God damn it. So <laughs> <laughs> you're all out of... <laughs> the good news is, you're not even battling yet, Oh, my Katie. God, I can't handle this. Okay, this, by the way... Quickly, this go is, to break. This is a surf move. Packers this, is, this is known as the uh, the two-board Packers, Packers, so well <laughs> Packers Buccaneers. Sounds like a... Okay. Packers Buccaneers. You like that one, too? Hey, don't go anywhere. Coming back with me. He's you know, 6'1", probably 225, 230, and just he runs. I mean, as soon as he, when he catches the ball, he's just very violent with how he runs. And, um, yeah, he just has that, that dog in him. I think he sets a tone for the run. Oh, let's get into it, Kay. Got that dog in him. I, when he said that, it oh. brought the house down. I was dying, Conrad. I mean, how could you not? I mean, yeah. he got – AJ Brown does have that dog in him. Oh wait, they, hold on. What, oh, you got puppies in your bed. I do have puppies. Now, Matt Lenny Smith has never been part of this segment. It's something that our Southern Belle likes to do, and we had a guy who has that dog in him on the show. We definitely did, Kay. The first ever historical got that dog in him with Danny Woodhead, because Danny Woodhead got that dog in him. All right, Kay. This guy, he does it all. Kay, you want running? He got you. <laughs> Kay, you want receiving? Danny Woodhead got you. Let me see. Let me see the play. Oh, Let's absolutely. Go. Look at this. Th this ah! is what Danny Woodhead would do. He would dip, dive, dunk, whatever. And look at this. Just outside laying out linebackers. He blocks. He catches. Matt he runs. Lenny, you, you he know does guy. it all. 
You know what, Kane? He was a true do it all back. Look at that. So many ways to describe this man right here. Gritty, fast, skilled, but there's only one true way to describe the essence of Danny Woodhead, Kay, and that's a dog. He got that dog in him. And got a golden really retriever does. in his chest. You know, kind he of does. a do it all dog I, I as well. Mean, that's what Danny Woodhead is. I always is. thought to myself, what could possibly make Danny Woodhead better? And I didn't know until I saw a, do <laughs> a, do a golden retriever in his body. All right, I, I got somebody who might, in fact, have. That oh, dog okay. within He them. certainly does. And his name is Amon Raw Swing Brown. Equinemius, nothing to sneeze at either, but let's roll he the got tape that dog on Amon because he is amazing. Second year receiver. Uh, not only had nine catches for over 100 yards and two touchdowns, and the Lions went over the commanders. He added 68 yards on the ground. Listen, he's emerging as one of the best road receivers in the league as far as 2022 is concerned, and a big reason why the Lions have the second highest scoring offense in the land. And you like the Lions in your power ranking. I do, uh, and I love Amon Ross St. Brown. I said it during the draft. He's he's Southern California legend, modern day monarch, two national championships. Yeah. He does everything. He's just a winner. I love the Lions. He is does a he, massive. Can we see if he has the dog? He got a dog. You know. Oh he yeah. Let's dog. see. Let's check him out. We got. We <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that, look at that happy <laughs> this pup. This is so stupid. Conrad, take <laughs> no, it away. No, we got. We got one more. We got okay. one more. Okay, go. Let's, you know, let's get into Darius Slay. You know why? Because after what we saw on Monday Night Football, Darius Slay locked up Justin Jefferson. Nobody saw it coming except Darius Slay. This guy had two interceptions, two interceptions, should have had four interceptions, handed the ball off to James Harden, gave the other one to his son. But you know what? Darius Slay, NFC Defensive Player of the Week, and for right reasons, because Darius Slay got that dog. Let's and for the see. first time ever, oh! double dog, two interceptions, double dog for Darius Slay. A double dog in him situation. His heart is a uh, is an English bulldog, and his yeah. uh, the, his right lung is a pit bull. No I mean, that's, that's the, some serious dog. No that's some that serious dog. Double dog reference. Dog. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Give I me will, a guttural I, dog, I, I Kay. Give me a dog. Pa Give Packers me a dog. at Buccaneers. <laughs> Who's got that dog in him this weekend? Uh, I love what the Packer doing. Run the ball. Look, that's what Lambeau's built for in the playoffs, right? They fail. They've fallen short in the postseason. Let's get Dylan going. Let's get that running game going. Aaron I'm, Jones. Love Aaron Jones, but we need. Odell. Listen, we Aaron oh, Rodgers, we don't know how long we have him. That. I'm just going to put this little nugget out there and manifest as we do with Matt Money Smith. We'll just put a pin at in Odell. That. Make it as fun as it can be, Packers. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Fun show. Absolutely. I'm dying. I feel like a dog. I feel like a puddle of sweat.